Hi, my name is Brendan Haas. I'm the product manager of grounding and bonding solutions at Panduit. Grounding and bonding can do more than just protect personnel from electric shock. When done properly and intentionally, it can also optimize network performance and protect your equipment. To accomplish these goals, it is best to reference a national or local standard such as TIA 607C and its harmonized global version ISO 30129. Make sure not to only rely on the NEC code. Panduit has devised five steps to help address the grounding and bonding network infrastructure in order to make sure that you have the correct products you need. Step one is to protect from electrostatic discharge or equalizing the potential of the worker and the cabinet or the system itself. Electronic circuit board damage can occur with as little as 19 volts potential difference, whereas the electric sock that you feel, hear, or see is up towards 2900 volts. That means you could be damaging the equipment and not even knowing. So to do this, Panduit provides a wrist strap to equalize the worker's potential. Step two is to bond your equipment locally to the cabinet or rack. This should always be done per the manufacturer's instructions, but TIA requires this to be done in a visually verifiable manner. It is easiest to use a green insulated jumper and connect the equipment to a metallic rail strip or horizontal bus bar. If the equipment has metal flanges instead of a landing zone for a two-hole lug, make sure to use paint piercing mounting hardware and to bond the flange to the rack or cabinet. Step three is to ensure that the cabinet or rack you are bonding to is electrically continuous. Even if there are signs of the frame being welded, you should always use paint piercing hardware to bond sections together to reduce resistance. Make sure any separate panel or door hinge is also connected with a jumper. Step four is to to bond this system back to the room's primary or secondary bonding bus bar. If tapping into a larger run, make sure to use irreversible compression splices and never daisy chain your cabinets or racks together. Step five is to bond any nearby conductive items. This means ensuring ladder racks and cable tray sections are electrically continuous, any armored cable is properly bonded, and any exposed building steel and conduit are also connected to the bonding network and back to the bus bar. If you have a supplemental bonding network or below floor reference grid, make sure that either the electrical contractor or a data center technician connects it properly to the support posts as well as to the secondary bonding bus bar. For more information or if you have any questions pertaining to Panduit's five-step method for grounding and bonding, please contact Panduit Customer Service or your local sales rep. I'm Brendan Haas with Panduit.